Everybody does this during youth group meetings where you take a, you screenshot yourself and then put it as your background. <laughs> Wait, let me see. <laughs> Wait, do it. <laughs> and then, and then you do it again, you know, and then you, you get like a fan of like yourself, like making weird faces. <laughs> This is the best I can do with virtual backgrounds with the image processor. Hey everyone, my name is Christian, and I want to welcome you to Big Kid Questions About God. Today in our studio, we have Christy Farber, Lindsay Murphy, and Dan Hammer. And our question today is, who wrote the Bible? I did. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed your time in our studio today. Have a wonderful week. Well, okay. that is a pretty big question, but it's a good question and an important one. Some people go so far as to think that the Bible was entirely written by God that God is this character off in the sky who came down and made people just start writing and they didn't really know what they were writing, but then when they kind of woke up, oh, there it is, it's the Bible. So that's one way of thinking of it. And then there's an entirely different way of thinking about it that said, God had nothing to do with this. There were people through the ages who for their own reasons and for things that were meaningful to them, wrote down the stuff that we now accept as our scriptures. And the Bible is a completely human book. So some people might think that. But then in between those two extremes are quite a few Christians through the ages, including our Presbyterian tradition. So for me, I think of the Bible being inspired the way a poet might be inspired to write a poem or a composer might be inspired to write a piece of music. It has something to do with what's going on in the life of the artist, but also there might be something of a divine spark that is uh, generating that creativity. Let me add to that. I think that divine spark that uh, oftentimes we'll talk about that as the Holy Spirit now, that is still present when we read the scriptures. As we open up the Bible, we can see new things in it every time. We can hear some new message when we gather together and we open it. I think that's the same kind of divine spark that works today in how we read it. Something else I really appreciate about how our tradition approaches scripture is that there is some freedom around being able to wrestle with the Bible, to say, gosh, this doesn't make sense, or this isn't creating the picture I have of God, or this is kind of messed up, um, and that there is some freedom we have to not worship the Bible, that we worship God. And so even the parts of scripture that are really difficult for us to read or understand, give us some insight into humanity. And sometimes the insight we have on humanity is humanity's pretty messed up, but that we have a loving God that's always trying to redeem us and um, love us and um, help us form to God's will, which is to be people of radical love. I appreciate the mentions of creativity and freedom. And that makes me wonder, did everything in the Bible really happen? And what about the people? Are, are all the people real? My kids ask me this question a lot because I think they read, they'll read fairy tales and then they'll read scripture and then they'll like, they'll hear stories told, but they'll come home from Sunday school and they'll talk about stories um, from Genesis, like Adam and Eve. And they'll go, were those real people? Um, and the answer to that is like, those aren't historical people. We don't have facts about Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are stories people told around a campfire of how creation was started. And so there are historical figures. There are stories that we told uh, that tell something about how we understand creation and God's love. And it's all in the scriptures together. Well, thank you for those responses. I'm curious, what do you think 
is the weirdest story in the Bible. So when I was in sixth grade and going to Sunday school, I remember we did a series on the book of Judges. I think of the story of Ehud, which is about this guy who is left-handed and because of that, he's able to conceal a dagger on his right leg where no one expected it. And he was able to, you know, do what needed to be done with this uh, evil King Eglon. And it's quite a story. Dan, you stole my story. That was the one I was thinking of too. You should have jumped right in. Isn't that the Bible about like a bird pooping on someone's head? I don't know that one. Oh, it's in Tobit. It's extra. Oh. Where a bird poops on somebody's head? Yeah, or someone in someone's eye. How much time do you spend reading Tobit? I don't. It was just a. It was just a like a story I remember. Christian, what do you think? I was trying to think about some Jesus stories, and there are some miracles that just strike me as as weird. He gets into Jerusalem um, at the end of the Gospels, and he apparently gets really hangry, which is something I can relate to. Um, and curses this fig tree when it doesn't have anything for him to eat. Um, and, uh, and that's just weird. I stopped eating fig newtons just in case. <laughs> oh man, I love figs. We eat dread figs all the time. You're, you're on thin ice there. I guess so. <laughs> well, thank you all for your answers. And this was a great conversation and I hope it's fun for everybody at home to watch with us. Thank you for joining us in our studio today. And uh, we hope you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. That's, that's the end. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, do it, Dan. Do it. Do it. Dan, do it, please. Because <laughs> Christy's always trying not to get on here. She tries not to say too many things. <laughs> that has to be the end. <laughs> I do mute myself a lot. Hi, my name is Christian, and I want to welcome you to Youth Questions About God. You said youth funny. How do you not say that word funny? It's a funny word. <laughs> What's the uh, the apocryphal gospel where where boy Jesus like makes the clay pigeons fly? Is that boy George's brother? <laughs> boy Jesus. <laughs>